This is the first in a series of video walkthroughs describing the new capabilities of Outside View 8.1. This video will take you through the list of those new capabilities. Don't worry, you don't have to take notes on this presentation. Anytime you want to, simply open the Outside View 8.1 User's Guide where you'll be able to see this list. But for now, let me take you through it. We have worked in cooperation with Microsoft Corporation to become formally certified on the Windows 7 platform. That makes Outside View 8.1 supported in all the current Windows operating systems. We have thoroughly modernized the look and feel of Outside View 8.1. For instance, we have given users the capability to quickly and easily select through a number of standard themes. Simply view, application look, and then pick a theme they like. Although the prior technology of cascaded or tiled view, the multiple document or MIDI interface, still is available, we've given users the capability to select sessions via tabbed windows. And what that does is that you can move between the sessions very very rapidly and easily and each view each session that's in focus is a full screen view also we've given users thumbnail views into the sessions as shown on this example screen all of the sessions listed in the session bar on the left could be thumbnail views or if you chose they could remain either file names or icons but whichever way you choose to have them displayed in the session bar if you hover over that listing in the session bar you'll get a live pop-up thumbnail of the session that's not currently in focus so now you can monitor what's going on in the background while focusing on the in focus or foreground session outside view 8.0 introduced a concept of context recognition. This was so that we could track command history and offer it back to users based on what they're doing. If you're in SCF, we'll give you the commands that you were using in FCF. If you're in FUP, we'll give you FUP commands. In 8.1, we've extended that concept so that we will dynamically change the labeling of the function key toolbar based on the context of the active session. On the screen that you're seeing, for instance, the upper uh, session is in tackle and the toolbar is a generic F1 through F16 labeling. The lower uh, portion of the screen is a snapshot taken from a T-edit session where, because we're in T-edit, the labeling for the function key was dynamically and automatically changed over to show the functions in the T-edit environment. This capability can be extended to all contexts, including homegrown application environments. Prior to release, Outside View 8.1 was tested extensively by a number of customers. I think this was probably the most popular new feature. Identity caching is the concept that you can take a session file and tag them with a common um, ID type that says these sorts of sessions or these session files all share a common credential set so that if you have different logons to different hosts, different roles, each of those can, can be one ID type. And then when you open such sessions, each time the first one comes up, you're prompted for your credentials only one time. And then those credentials are stored only in RAM, not on disk, and encrypted for future use. And so as you go through your day, as additional sessions of a known ID type come up, you're automatically logged in. For instance, if you opened a workspace that had 15 sessions and among those 15 sessions are enough different hosts and login locations that you'd have to enter three unique credential sets, what would happen through the identity caching is that you would be prompted for only three, but all 15 sessions would lo be logged in automatically. You would no longer have to enter all 15 uniquely. If you were to close that workspace and reopen it, you wouldn't be prompted for any. Those credentials are stored in RAM and all 15 would be re-logged on automatically. As you disconnect, reconnect, close and open sessions throughout the day, 
the identity management capability in the outside view 8.1 will handle logging back on for you. Now we support the Kerberos layer of SSH but this identity management capability actually goes a little farther in that it is available for SSH sessions, for SSL sessions, even for Telnet sessions and across whether they are terminal emulation or file transfer sessions the identity manager is applicable to all. Session cloning is a nice convenience. If you are in one session and decide I need another instance you simply right click on it in the session bar say clone a session outside view will initiate a second copy and if that second session is an ID managed one we will also log you in automatically. Speaking of conveniences, we've given the capability to update the serial number and key information in Outside View dynamically. Simply go to Help, About Outside View, and click on Change Product License, and you're able to enter a new serial number and key. This would come in extremely conveniently if you're moving, for instance, from an evaluation license to a production one, or if your software inventory is being normalized or reallocated within your organization. We have also added in Outside View 8.1 a failover and failback capability within session files. What that is is that session files are no longer limited to a single host and port. You can now enter a series of them. It will both automatically fail over to alternate locations and it will also automatically recover to the primary location, giving you both failover and failback capability. We've given a similar capability within our enterprise architecture. Enterprise architecture is a star network with a central hub. And what we've done is you can now replicate that shared hub location and simply have a file in existence that says primary location, secondary location. That gets automatically distributed to the end users. And as each end user starts their outside view, if that copy cannot access the primary hub, it will automatically fail over to the secondary hub for disaster recovery purposes. And each time you restart outside view, it will again try the primary location, providing both failover and failback capabilities at the enterprise SharePoint level. I hope everyone is aware that outside view supports SSH encryption. What we've done in 8.1 is extended it to permit multi-segment or multiple hop SSH tunneling. This is the scenario where you cannot see the eventual end destination, but you can only route yourself to it through a series of SSH servers. We've also worked quite a bit within Outside View 8.1 within our file transfer module. We have given you a capability to transfer files laterally from host to host without having to have the file transit through the workstation or PC as a separate step. The way it works is you simply select the file, right click on it, say transfer to, and you get a list of the other active file transfer sessions. So this is whether they're FTP, SFTP, SSL secured FTP, whatever all of the active file transfer sessions and you can send a file laterally to another host. From the PC side we have given an ability to control the file attributes when uploading to the Guardian file system. We've also given a capability to upload a workstation file to multiple hosts in a single operation. You simply select the file right click on it say upload to multiple hosts and you get a list of all the active file transfer sessions and you can select one or all to receive the file. One of our largest customers was very excited about this they distribute files on a regional basis and so they saw where they could create a workspace for each of their regions each workspace containing a file transfer session to all of their nonstop systems and so now if they needed to push a file to all the systems in for instance the western region they would call up a workspace it would prompt for credentials one time automatically log in all of these SFTP sessions multiples of them and then they would go upload to multiple hosts select all boom it's gone they've sent a single file encrypted 
to all of their regional systems with a single operation. Again, they were pretty excited about that. For our programmers and developers, we haven't forgotten you either. We've given you some incredibly effective tools. One of them is that we've now embedded a universal editor that is syntax aware and color coded. To access it, you merely pick a file, say download and edit. You are prompted for what language that file is and then the file is brought up in that universal editor, again, aware of the syntax of that specific language, color-coded, unintelligent editor. We've even added an edit monitor, and what that does is it helps, it's a watchdog, so that if you make edits to a file and perhaps forget to upload it again to the host, we would let you know, we would, if you tried to exit outside view we could say did you mean to upload this file you've changed it since you last uploaded it so it's just a memory aid for yourselves and that monitoring can be stopped or suspended or resumed perhaps the most powerful change to the outside view product in the 8.1 release is that we have provided a dotnet application program interface which allows complete control of outside view from any .NET language. The interface component drops onto the, your design surface. You see a full event structure and now you can manipulate the outside view experience or transport layer in the .NET language of your choice. That's our summary look at the new features in Outside View 8.1 and I hope I've answered the question of what's new in Outside View 8.1. A lot is new in Outside View 8.1. For more information, please contact us at sales at crystalpoint.com. Thank you.